Hi everyone, hope you're all doing well and yesterday was a very busy day in the stock market. I don't know if you were able to keep up with all the companies reporting earnings but there was a lot. Um, so we'll try to spend a minute or two and go through all of these and my thoughts on all of them. Um, and yeah, there was a lot to go through. There's a few that I've not currently gone through the uh, full conference calls yet. Uh, I will try and go through them at some point uh, but the ones I have done I'll probably be able to share a bit more information on them. Uh, but yeah, we'll do a quick review and uh, see how everything's going. So the one I'm going to start off with is Greg's. Um, for a particular reason as well, which I'll talk about in a second. Uh, but Greg's reported earnings, uh, they were the first ones to report earnings, obviously because the UK stock market opens up a little bit earlier than the US stock markets. Um, and initially the, the actual earnings were taken quite good. You can see it opened up down, there was a quick pop, and they actually <laughs> ended up closing negative. It was quite a volatile volatile day for Greg's in the end of it. Um, but yeah, their earnings were pretty strong. They were kind of knew they were going to be. Um, we knew that the recovery was getting better and better. You know, if we, you know, it's, Greg's is actually entering the phase now of the longer term investments really, you know, we've been in this company uh, over a year and a half, coming up to two years now. So, you know, when we look at a long term investment, we're kind of looking for that two to five year hold. And uh, yeah, it's starting to enter the two to five year hold. It's done better than what I thought it would do uh, before the two to five years for sure. I thought the whole kind of CV recovery would have taken a longer time. But obviously, as you guys know, uh, especially for Greg's, it has shot up quite a bit. And uh, yeah, the numbers were pretty solid. You know, the target was, as I said previously, is 2020, just try to get back to kind of break even. Uh, 2021, can we then go and have a, a pretty good year and try and get past, you know, 2019 numbers? Now, actually, if we go to half one, um, it's um, still a little bit down because of the lockdowns, but what we have in Q2 is the strong rebound of 2019's growth. And hopefully, if we don't have any more lockdowns this year, then we should have a year of strong numbers. Greg's will go back to profit and everything's going to be happy and we'll basically be above and beyond where we'll be in 2019, which was a target and it looks like we're getting there already, um, barring any other lockdowns and we should be okay. So Greg's all performing very well. And um, they came out and said they're also looking to open more stores, which is good. Obviously you've got the Just Eat side of it a little bit more now, which will also help sales going forward. And uh, yeah, everything's really good. Now the only little thing is on the share price with Greg's, this is a tricky situation. And this is why I wanted to do Greg's first as well. If I can just fl flick out here to a five year point of view, um, you can see here, this is when we peaked before the CV uh, whole dip happened, which was the 21st of February, 2020. Now you look here at the stock and it went down 50%. Now that was quite brutal because what actually happened with this company as well in the first time, um, so if we look here, it actually initially dropped 35% in March. And then in March, I remember this time and as when, because as well as the ability of having YouTube is I, I can see like a lot of thoughts of people's in, in the market, a lot of retail investors, because I get a lot of people's opinions commented on my video. And originally when this happened, people were like, oh yeah, Greg's is really good. It's going up, it's going up. And then what happened is for, it didn't really make sense, but then we had a second dip in Greg's uh, as well as a few UK stocks. And then the stocks went down even further. Now what people don't really remember in Greg's is this pain that we had over the course of look March to about September, we had a good like half a year of pain. We had six months of this stock going down. And uh, you know, at one point I was down like 20, 30% on Greg's. And then what happened? Boom, we have the shoot up. And what happened in that period? I just averaged down, averaged down. I had the patience, knew it was a long-term investment. It's worked a lot better than what I thought it would do. It's recovered a lot quicker than what I thought it would. Uh, you know, I thought it would take you know at least two years to do what it's doing right now. And then boom, we have the rewards. And do you know how many negative comments you kind of get about Greg's now? You don't get that many comments. And people, you know, no one talks about Greg's because people are happy they're making money. And this is the thing, like, it's all about patience and having that game plan and being wait, being able to wait on your stocks 12, 18 months. And this big run that we've been on in the last kind of, uh, since about you know this sort of time in October and the stock market's gone up and up. This doesn't help with people's patience. People want a lot of success really like instantly. And you gotta remember like in this time here, you know, there was a massive period where Greg's was just going down and down and down. And I remember at the time, you know, I got a lot, I could have put a lot of screenshots up here saying like, oh, I'm fed up with holding Greg's. Greg's, you know, what a bad pick. Oh, it doesn't do anything. But I was just happy to hold. For me, it's a long-term investment, wait for it to play out. You know, I was down on this company 30% and boom, we go up now. And you know what? People aren't really too bored about Greg's now because we're up on the position and we made a lot of money. And I just wanted to make that point very clear because that will be very similar to the next three stocks and also quite a few of the 
comments I get before uh, as well, like on the Huey side of it as well, you know, sometimes you just gotta have patience with these sort of things. Now the only little problem you do have with Greg's now it is sitting around about 2.7 billion market cap. If we run the profit off what it's gonna probably do, that's gonna put it around about a 30p ratio, um, which is quite an expensive valuation. So even though the earnings were pretty good, it is, you know, it's high, it's, if we go back to the CV, kind of pre-CV, it is higher than where it was there. Um, and it's not really developed any more than that, so it isn't. You could argue it's even more valued than what it was beforehand, and it was trading at a premium. Um, so that's the only problem. It does deserve to trade at a premium because it is such a good company. But the only thing now is Greg's. It's a bit like the, a lot of the big tech stocks; like they can bring out really good earnings, but this just isn't going to move now because of high, how, how highly priced it is. And that's the only thing that's going to hold Greg's back going forward. Um, and that's why I've, I've considered quite a few times about selling this stock. But the problem is if I sell this stock, you know, I'm selling probably one of the best management teams, one of the best companies on the UK stock market. And if you let that go, you know, what other opportunities can you, what other opportunities are out there for you to put your money in? There's not that many. So uh, yeah, if I was to sell it, I have to make sure that I can find a very good opportunity to replace it uh, because it's one of the best stocks at a very good average that I have. Um, so that's just something that I'm kind of considering uh, with Greg's right now is that, you know, that's, that's definitely the thing you have to be really careful with it. Uh, next up was Alibaba. Um, Alibaba earnings were in the morning or lunchtime for us in the UK side of it. Um, earnings were pretty strong. Um, if we look here, um, if we have a look at the numbers, there was a slight miss on the revenue, uh, but still grew at 33%. EPS was good. Uh, the management made a really good decision. Uh, they decided to increase their share back uh, purchase program, uh, which is needed because you know the best thing to do is if you've got a lot of cash, which Alibaba has, and your stock's dirt cheap, what do you do? Buy back your shares, and uh, they're doing it, which is great. It, that's what I think Huya should do. They've got massive amounts of cash sitting there, sitting there now, and if the merge is not gonna happen with Douyu, for me, what Huya should do is uh, use that cash to purchase back shares, and um, so we'll see exactly if that does happen. Um, but yeah, overall, Alibaba earnings were good. The only little thing that was weak was the cloud side of it, they lost a customer. If they didn't lose that customer, um, the revenue would have been probably be and even stronger growth. And uh, yeah, overall, I mean, the numbers were, were pretty good. I'd give Alibaba probably a seven or eight out of 10. Um, yeah, and I think the big thing that Alibaba comes to is if you think it's a good company and the numbers are legit, this company growing at 30% rate at 23 P ratio is dirt cheap. Uh, so if you think the if the legit numbers, you're probably thinking this is a screaming buy. If you don't think the legit numbers are, you think like these a lot of these Chinese problems are gonna affect this company that it doesn't grow what it has done, then you don't buy it. And I think that's the big thing that Alibaba comes down to. But overall, uh, really good numbers from Alibaba. Um, next up, Corsair. Um, these guys as well, they reported early morning. Um, in the US or mid lunchtime for us guys. Um, obviously the stock was taken, the, on the day it was taken negative. Um, we had a big massive drop all the way down to like $26. Uh, we had a bit of a, tried to put a bit of a bounce in and then it came back down again. Uh, trading down at a 17 P ratio right now, which is definitely worth noting because that is, uh, when we look at the numbers in a little bit, it's, it is quite dirt cheap for this company. Um, we look at the EPS, it said it missed by uh, three cents, misses on revenue. Um, revenue still grew at 24% though, which is really impressive. You know, when we talk about this company that kind of has this, um, or it only benefited from the CV situation, um, but then it's still putting in like 24% uh, year over year revenue growth, kind of shows that there's a lot more to this than just, a, you know, a one, one trick pony where it's had one good year. Uh, that was all very good. Because uh, it's still making more and more profit, which uh, is great is paying down debt, which is uh, probably the only thing about this company is that the balance sheet could be a little bit stronger. And it is paying down debt and uh, it probably will carry on paying down debt. Outlook didn't change on the company. Um, this is the one that I have listened to the earnings call. Management went on to say, look, we, we actually had a very good quarter. If you look at what we kind of guided when we came public, we're actually trading at like 20, 23, 2024 20, uh, levels. Um, so we've kind of had to increase our like in inventory a huge amount than what we expected. Uh, there's a lot of like in inventory problems as well. Um, shipping is costing a lot more. I think they said the price of containers were three times what they were uh, in 2019, uh, which is a problem. They also had a little bit of problem because of, I think it was the CPUs and uh, the graphics card. Um, they're having a lot of problems with the uh, semiconductors, which I think if you have, if you listen to a lot of conference calls, uh, they've been saying something very similar. Um, and if they didn't have them problems, they reckon they would have made tens, tens of millions more. 
um, in their actual earnings. Um, so yeah, if that would have happened, we could be talking, you know, towards 500 million kind of revenue, which would have been uh, really good. Obviously they've uh, released a face camera as well, which will be huge. You only have to look at Logitech's earnings and they were saying how good their uh, webcams were. So that will start coming in. Uh, I think we launched like 73 products, which was also very impressive. Um, so yeah, overall for a year where there was a lot of problems with logistics and actually getting the inventory and scaling up, um, I think this kind of this company kind of proved that actually we can still grow at a good rate. Uh, the other thing as well um, that I thought was really strange is that Seeking Alpha actually put this as a massive revenue miss here. Um, but the thing is, the the analysts going into this were so unsure what Corsair were going to do. Um, there was actually like a uh, if you look here, they reported four hundred seventy two million. I think the actual like analyst all over the place had like a 120 million gap between the low estimate and the high estimate. So to actually report this as a miss is a little bit unfair in my opinion because a lot of analysts had no no clue if Corsair was gonna come in with flat growth or strong growth or middle growth, you know. Um, they, they just had no idea. So um, the, the range of estimates actually for Corsair were, were huge. And to say that they actually came in with 472 million um, was actually pretty good. It was you know, roughly about in the middle side of it. So um, yeah, I thought that was a really strange thing. Uh, but yeah, overall, um, for me, I just wanted to see that it wasn't a one-trick pony. And you can see here a 24% growth. Uh, we look at uh, what the trading at, 24% growth company at a 17 P ratio that has uh, good profit growth, paying down its debt. Um, yeah, it's um, for me, this is a, a very strong buy in the stock market. Uh, next up, uh, skills. Uh, this is one that um, I've gone through uh, the in the actual report, but I've not listened to the conference call yet, fully yet. Same again, these guys um, I've got here, you know, they had a, a big ra range of estimates as well uh, because people didn't know what skills was actually going to report on their earnings. Um, at the moment, the stock is kind of down 2% on their earnings report. But overall, the earnings were pretty good. Um, as expected, Q2 losses um, were going to be quite big. They're always going to be quite big with skills because of the amount of money they put into the marketing side of it and scaling up. Um, that's always going to happen with this sort of company when it's in the hyper growth stage. Revenue though grew 52% and once again we talk about a company that's coming off really hard numbers to beat. You look at Corsair, they had hard numbers to beat, they grew uh, 24%. Skills, uh, once again they had hard numbers to beat and they came in with 52% which was really good. Um, obviously like I said about the net, net losses side of it as well. Um, also we heard about them closing uh, about the Archie deal. And they've also invested into a new esports company as well to help them, which is good. They had two new game launches as well. Uh, they upped their marketing just slightly. Um, and people that worried about how much money they're burning through, don't worry too much. They got 692 million on the balance sheet with no debt as well. And um, yeah, overall, they kind of went on to talk about the NFL deal uh, that they have the partnership. So they kind of select 14 uh, game developers now to go develop the games, and they'll select select who the winner is and that will come out probably towards like you know maybe q4 q1 um just as the nfl season finishes and um yeah overall this the skills earnings for me were were pretty good and um, they were pretty much everything that i kind of wanted i was kind of worried that they were going to have really hard numbers to beat and we might have only seen the company grow at like 20 percent revenue um but once again i think this is the 22nd quarter of consecutive revenue growth um, and yeah very very good um, I think Greg's like I say Greg's was decent I think Alibaba was uh, once I'd say that was a probably a 7 or 8 out of 10 I think Corsair I thought I was really impressed with Corsair's earnings um, I, I thought Corsair's was a strong eight, uh, 9 out of 10 uh, and I would say that skills was probably uh, once again I would say theirs was an 8 out of 10 um, overall so yeah Overall, the numbers were pretty good. Um, I think the big thing is not to get caught up with some of the headlines that you've seen, uh, rather than seeing a lot of these numbers are, are pretty pre impressive with hard quarters to beat. And let's not forget a lot of analysts were even struggling to predict there was such a wide range of where they could see these numbers going. Um, so to see still strong growth after really good quarters is just kind of thinking, okay, in the longer term, Where's these, where are these companies going to be two to five years? Uh, where do you see them developing? Are they going to be great companies in the long term? And if you're happy for them to be great, if you think they're going to be great companies, then you should be happy really to pick up some of these investments. Same with like Corsair. Um, I think the amount of products are extending, uh, having now and expanding to the valuation, what the face cam, the new face cam product will do for them in the long term. That's a massive new category uh, for them. And um, yeah, overall, there was some pretty good strong earnings here. And um, 
Obviously the market didn't take them too positive, but in the long term, I see these uh, good stepping stones for where the company's gonna go in the two, next two to five years. And uh, as long as the company kind of carries on reporting strong earnings, strong revenue growth uh, in the long term, um, that will see uh, the, probably the share price follow it, and uh, there'll be some good money to make overall. So I hope that quick recap was useful, and uh, there's some uh, good information in there. Um, and yeah, if you could hit the like button, that'd be amazing, and I'll see you on the next video.